With his Texas twang and laid-back attitude, Woody Harrelson is truly a unique talent. His father, Charles Harrelson, didn't have much to do with raising Woody, but they still have a lot in common. What they don't have in common is their occupation. Charles Harrelson was a hitman. Born in 1938, Charles Harrelson was a man who couldn't stop moving. He grew up in Texas and joined the Navy, and after getting his fill of the Deep Blue Sea, started selling encyclopedias in Los Angeles. It was around this time he married Woody's mom, Diane, but Harrelson wasn't what you'd call a great husband. Years later, after divorcing Woody's mom and remarrying, Charles Harrelson decided it was a good idea to start killing people for money. He even got himself some business cards that read, Have Gun Will Travel and Hitman. During his time as a contract killer, it's rumored that Harrelson was asked to murder at least 20 people, including carpet salesman Allen Berg and grain salesman Sam DeGilia Jr. Thanks to a superstar attorney named Percy Foreman, the same lawyer who represented the killer of Martin Luther King Jr., Harrelson was able to escape with a bunch of not guilty verdicts and lighter sentences. Eventually, however, Charles Harrelson's luck ran out. When a drug lord in some legal trouble hired Charles Harrelson to take out a federal judge, everything changed. The judge, John H. Wood, was getting ready to leave for work in May 1979 when Harrelson shot him in the back with a rifle. The judge died on the way to the hospital, and the killing absolutely shook the nation. It was the first time a federal judge had been assassinated in the United States, and President Jimmy Carter condemned the killing as, quote, an assault on our very system of justice. Soon, there was a $200,000 reward, and Harrelson wouldn't last long with every law enforcement agent in the country on his trail. While driving down a Texas interstate in his girlfriend's Corvette, the car's muffler started giving him trouble. And as Harrelson wasn't exactly a mechanic, he decided to fix the muffler by blasting it with a 44 Magnum. Harrelson, who was high on cocaine at the time, shot out his tire instead. All that gunfire on the side of the road attracted quite a bit of attention, and soon the cops were on the scene. Harrelson found himself in a standoff with the police for six long hours, threatening suicide the entire time. And as officers trained their guns in his direction, Harrelson admitted to the killing of the judge, as well as John F. Kennedy, interestingly enough. At one point, he even tossed a note out of his car that read, Since death is certain, I should only be credited with speeding up a natural process. My marker should read, He did his best for ZPG, zero population growth. Eventually, the cops brought in a businesswoman named Virginia Farah, who was Harrelson's friend and had once hired him as a bodyguard. She was able to talk the hitman out of the car, and Charles Harrelson eventually found himself behind bars once again. Only this time, there would be no mercy for the contract killer. In 1981, Woody Harrelson was 20 years old. He was still years away from being famous, one day when he was just sitting around listening to the radio. That's when a news report started talking about one Charles Harrelson, a hitman on trial for murder. It was right then and there that Woody first heard his father was a contract killer. Up until that point, the young Harrelson didn't really know much about his dad. His father left the family when Woody was just a child, and Charles spent most of the 1970s in jail. Speaking about his dad, Woody commented, I don't feel like he was much of a father. He took no valid part in my upbringing. Still, for decades, Woody considered his father's conviction a, quote, travesty, claiming the judge who locked his dad up had been a pallbearer at John Wood's funeral. During the 80s and 90s, the actor spent millions trying to get his father a new trial. I'm not saying my father's a saint, but I think he's innocent of that. Harrelson explained later that he was, quote, just being a son trying to help his dad. In addition to the legal proceedings and all that misspent cash, Woody visited his father in prison once a year until his dad's death. And while their relationship was definitely weird, Woody said he and his dad were friends who got along pretty good. In 2012, while promoting the movie Rampart, Woody Harrelson sat down for an interview with The Guardian. During the chat, the topic of his dear dad came up, and Harrelson revealed the two actually shared a birthday, saying, They have a thing in Japan where they say if you're born on your father's birthday, you're not like your father, you are your father. And it's so weird when I would sit and talk with him. It was just mind-blowing to see all the things he did just like me. And looking at Harrelson's filmography, it's tempting to think that he's somehow channeling his murderous father into his characters. In 1994, he stirred up controversy with his performance as the psychopathic spree killer Mickey Knox in Natural Born Killers. Creepier still, in 2007, Harrelson would play Texas hitman Carson Wells in No Country for Old Men. 
The actor has also played killers in movies like Rampart, as well as criminals in films like Out of the Furnace and Solo, A Star Wars Story. Even Tallahassee from Zombieland is a bit kill-crazy, even if he's just picking off the undead. What do you think? Zombie kill of the week? And while we don't know that Woody Harrelson is intentionally tapping into his personal history for these parts, it's easy to see how an actor could use decades of deep-seated trauma and stories of assassinations to bring bad guys to life on the big screen. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite actors are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.